brought this out just for you. Go. Good job. Good job. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Woo! My wife told me I was a nerd. She said, call me a nerd to my face. Thanks, Chad. I really appreciate that. You're taking forever in Delhi. Listen, I have a great sermon today. How is your serve? Where's my opening slide at, y'all? Come on, man. Get with me. I'm ready to go here. There it is. That looks just like me, doesn't it? Look how slim that guy is versus this. I wasn't here. Listen, I'm preaching this morning on how is your served. And most all of us in life, we want to be recognized for something. You know, if you're a tennis player, you want to be recognized. We we long for some sort of affirmation in our life. We we long for people to uh, uh, recognize us for excelling at something, you know. I mean, what are you good at? You want somebody to recognize that you excel, and we want to be recognized for a job well done, and we want to be talked about, and we want uh, for we want to be recognized when we boldly help others, and and we even want to be recognized when we support a cause that we believe in. It is our nature; it is our human nature. But Christ teaches us something different. And in Mark's Gospel, the 10th chapter, Mark 10, verse 42 through 45, and the NIV says this, Jesus called them together and said, You know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lorded over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them, not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. We don't like talking about slavery in our world. It gets everybody all up tight. But Jesus says, if you want to be first, you've got to be a slave to all. And then it says in verse 45, and I love this, For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but... Jesus came to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Now listen, the context of this uh, story here is that James and John had just asked Jesus if they could sit at the right hand and another on the left in the kingdom of God. And this was Jesus' reply to the whole group. You see, at, at this point, particular time in the lives of the disciples they hadn't really gotten it they they were proud to be following in the footsteps of the rabbi teacher Jesus they hadn't made the shift from hearing his teachings to living his teaching they were still wanting to be number one they were still wanting to be recognized for the fact that we're following you Jesus And Jesus simply said, look, if you want to be number one, you've got to be a slave. They hadn't made the shift from his teachings to hearing them, to living them, and to becoming what Jesus taught. You see, the the one who stands tallest in the kingdom of heaven is the one who stands on his knees. The one that that stands tallest in the kingdom of heaven recognizes his own humility and the one who considers others better than himself. That is the one that stands tallest in the kingdom. The the one who seeks to serve, not be served, is the one who stands tallest in the kingdom of life. This is the, the, the one, if you seek to serve rather than be served, you are the one who loves and lives and looks like Jesus. 
God himself in human form walked this earth, he says, to be to, to serve and not to be served. And if there was ever anyone who should be recognized for his ultimate greatness, won't you think it would be Jesus? If there was anyone that should be recognized for greatness, Jesus should have been recognized, but he taught something completely different. He said, I did not come to be served, but I came to serve. I've read a lot of stories through my life in ministry, and I, I, some of my favorite are of Mother Teresa. And Mother Teresa once said this, We are all pencils in the hand of a writing God who is sending love letters to the world. We are here to serve God and to serve man. We are to be utensils in the hand of God to serve humanity and to show them that they love and that they are loved. Mother Teresa chose as a life's calling to be served, not to serve. And she lived in the, the ghettos in Calcutta, India. She wanted to live like Jesus. And we need to ask ourselves this question. Every one of us here in the sound of my voice this morning needs to ask yourself this question, what is my job for the kingdom? What has God called me to do and to be? We need to ask, and what is my job? And then when you recognize that, ask yourself, am I doing what God has called me to do? Am I serving others? Am I being like Jesus? Jesus said this in John, the 12th chapter. He said, whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, my servant will also be. My father will honor the one who serves me. Are you serving for Jesus this morning? Because if you want to be honored, you got to be serving today. If you want, and all of us like to be honored. We all want to know, you know, that 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 we that we're going to be honored for whatever it is that we do. I do look like a nerd. I just saw that in myself. I think it's the headband. Huh? Maybe it's my white pale legs that match my pants. Maybe it's those. I don't know. There was an old story of a man who fell in the pit. And he couldn't get himself out. So the empathetic person came along and said, Boy, I really feel for you down there in that pit. An intelligent person walked by and said, It is logical that someone would fall into that pit a religious person said this only bad people fall into pits a mathematician came by and calculated the depth of the pit a news reporter wanted to exclusive on the story of the man in the pit an IRS agent came along and he wanted to know if he was paying taxes for the pit a self-pitying person said, you haven't seen anything until you've seen my pit. A fire and brimstone preacher said, you deserve your pit. A TV evangelist asked, did you bring your wallet into that pit? A psychologist noted, your mother and father are to blame for you being in that pit. A therapist said, believe in yourself and you can get out of that pit. But Jesus, seeing the man in the pit, took him by the hand and lifted him out of the pit. Come on, we're called to serve people, church. We're called to lift people out of the, the pit. And if you're going to follow Jesus, listen to me. If you are a follower of Jesus Christ, those of you that were baptized this morning, proclaiming that you were following Jesus, you're going to have to serve. You can't get away with not serving. Following Jesus requires that you would serve. I remember back years ago, Bob Dylan wrote a song. He became a Christian. He wrote a song, and I'll never forget this song. You've got to serve somebody. 
It might be the devil or it might be the Lord, but you're going to serve somebody. Listen, who are you serving? Are you serving Jesus this morning? Because if you're serving Jesus, you're going to be helping somebody else along the way. Someone once said, God does not ask for your ability. He only asks for your availability. God asks is that you are available to serve. Are you available to serve the kingdom of heaven this morning, church? Are you available to serve the kingdom of heaven? Oh, there's one amen. The rest of you, that's why I'm preaching this sermon this morning, to be honest with you. For all the rest of you that, besides my one amen here. Galatians 5, the 13 says, you, are, you, my brothers, were called to be free. Aren't you glad that Jesus gives us freedom? Aren't you glad that he set us free and he set our feet upon a rock and he saved us and he brought us out of the pit and he set our feet on a rock? Aren't you glad that we are called to be free? But it says this, don't use your freedom to indulge your sinful nature. Just because you're free, don't keep on doing like you used to do. Rather serve one another in love boy I could I could stand up here all day and preach you on serving and give you scriptures out of the Bible out of New Testament Old Testament talking and calling us to serve I want you to picture this a, a, a church in which everyone who comes wants to be served and each person believes that the church exists to meet their needs that's why the church exists is to meet their needs to make them happy and to cater to their whims and to their taste and imagine a congregation which everyone has a take care of me kind of attitude and is quick to complain whenever things are not just the way they feel they should be I'll never forget years ago we had a youth pastor here named Kenny White and we were in a, a planning meeting with a lot of volunteers and we were explaining the things that we needed to happen and, and how we were working to, to reach the youth and not just the youth but every age group and age bracket and we were planning and we were having a real a great session and one man stood up and he said, well where is the complaint department? Some of you look like, oh, that's a bad thing, but some of you have been looking for the complaint department since you got to Christian Life Center. But Kenny, greatest, greatest statement, I'm talking about the great, on the spot, just boom. He says, we don't have a complaint department, we do ministry. We're called to serve. And if you're looking for the complaint department, we don't have one of those. We're called to serve. Mm. That church, if, if, if you are following me, that church is, is the kind of church that will never make any kind of impact on the world or in their society. Because if we're all about us, that church is going to grow small and inward and will always be an unhealthy church. And that kind of church does not honor Jesus at all and does not bring glory to God. This is not a church ruled by a servant spirit if you're always wanting to be fed and to be taken care of and to be nurtured that's not the kind of church that we've been called to be that kind of church is like two guys that are in a lifeboat and from the their end of the boat they're in a lifeboat and from their end of the boat they watch as the other end passengers were bailing frantically to keep the boat afloat and then one of these two guys said to the other thank God that the hole is on their end of the boat in church it's sometimes easy to say it's somebody else's job it's not my job to do that pastor we're paying you good money to do that we're paying Pastor Nathan not good money, but we're paying him. We almost fired our youth pastor Chad this week. He, he was said he was the only volunteer in the history that was going to get fired from church because of his 20 minutes announcement last week. He was afraid all week long. 
It's not my job, it's your, you guys' job, you know. It's not my job, you guys keep bailing, we're going to keep watching. Thank God that that's not in our end of the boat. Now imagine a church in which every single person has a passion to serve somebody else. Ooh. Think about what could God could do through a group of people who are committed to sacrificial ministry to each other and to the community around us. These people know that the Holy Spirit has given each of us unique abilities and great spiritual gifting that are to be used for building people up and bringing glory to God. Imagine that church that is purposeful about discovering their gifts and developing their gifts and using them for others. What could God do in that kind of church? Listen, as we walk through our journey in life with Christ, there's just two options. You're either on the stretcher or you're carrying the stretcher. And yes, there are going to be times when you get beat up and you need to be carried. Listen, this church is a hospital for sin sick souls. This is not a place where perfect people can survive very long. You will be gone. Because you will recognize that you're the only one of us here that's perfect. And you will not fit in. But this place is a place where we encourage one another. And you may be on that stretcher. But that's not where you're meant to stay. And for the majority of time, listen to me. There are times that we need. But for the most of the time of your walk with Christ, we are called to serve others. We are called to carry the stretcher. For that person that is broken, the bottom line is that God wants each of us to carry people through their worst times in life. And the church was never meant to be a bunch of people that are watching just a few exhausted workers strained to carry the burdens of the whole congregation. That is not what the church was ever meant to be. There was never meant to be just a few. You know, the, there's the 80-20 rule in churches. Did you know that? There is a rule that every pastor knows. I hate this rule with a passion. 20% of the people do 80% of the work. 20% of the people do 80% of the work. The church was never look, meant to look like that. Because those 20% will, will break down. They are doing everything they can. They're exhausted. But a church that is filled with people who will serve is a church... That will change the world. A church that is full of people who are, listen to me, we don't have to serve. But we get to serve. We get to serve the kingdom of God by serving people. We are serving God's kingdom when we're serving others around us and helping them through the worst part of their life. I love the story in John 13 of Jesus. Jesus, John 13, 1 says that Jesus, having known that it was time for him to leave this world and go to the Father, sitting at the Passover table with his uh, uh, disciples and those that were closest to him. One translation says that he showed them the full extent of his love. Another translation says he loved his, those that were his own to the very end. I love that story. I love that scene in my mind. I can every time I read it or see it, I see Jesus loving his own to the end. I love the fact that he was showing them the full extent of his love. When the disciples walked in, there was no paid servant greeting them at the door with a a basin and a towel to refresh their tired and dirty feet after a long journey and they filed in and they 
hugged each other and they reclined near the table and about halfway through that dinner things got really weird because Jesus the Savior of the world the man they had been following the man that they knew and thought with everything that was in them was the one that would change the world it got weird John recorded it here in John 13 and verse 4 and 5 says that Jesus got up from the meal and he took off his outer coat and he wrapped a towel around his waist and after that he uh, he poured water into a basin and he began to wash his disciples feet and he dried them with a towel that was wrapped around him that story gets me every time I'm sorry but Jesus the Savior of the world showing them the full extent of his love he bowed down and he served them and he washed their feet We're called to serve. We're not called to sit idly by while the world goes to hell in a handbasket. And the church has long since lost our calling. The world is in trouble right now. And you can't watch the news. You know, most of us won't even watch the news anymore because it's so bad. But the church still sits idly by and lets the world go. The world is going their way. We can't really do anything about it. We say it's just too overwhelming. We can't do nothing. Joshua said this. In Joshua 24, he said, But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. You're going to serve somebody, whether it be the gods of your forefathers served beyond the, the river or the God of the Amorites. Are you going to serve the God of the land in who you are living? Are you going to serve the God of the world? But he says, for, for, but as for me and my household, because I have control over my household. I'm challenging you. Who are you going to serve? But as for me and my household, I'm going to tell you that we will serve the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And his name is Jesus. Listen to me every day. There are people around us with dirty feet and broken hearts there are people around you with heavy burdens that seems to be crushing them and and they have needs that we as the body of Christ can help meet their need and it's time for us as the body of Christ to get a a basin and a towel. And it's time for us to start serving like Jesus. Let's model what Jesus taught. Let's become a servant for others. Serving, listen to me, and serving the Lord means more than sitting in these wonderful padded chairs on Sunday morning. And serving means more than just coming to church functions. And showing up and letting us see your beautiful face. And we love your beautiful face. I do. Every one of you. But serving is more than coming and sitting and watching. Serving. Now listen. Some people say, well, if I serve, I'm going to have to sell off all my goods and give them to the poor, and I'm going to have to go to some foreign country. Anybody ever been afraid of going to Africa? I was when I was a kid, man. I just knew God was calling me to Africa. I just knew if I surrendered, I was going straight to Africa. 
Oh my God. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Don't call me to Africa. Listen, my, my daughter Rachel here is this morning, and Rachel and my little grandson, Lincoln Jack Mabry. He's asleep over there. And Rachel and her husband are on staff in Stephenville at First Baptist Church. And this spring break, Rachel and Matt had been asking me to go on spring break with them for several years. They, they go on a, uh, always do like an inner city mission trip. And listen, man, I had told them, no. Spring break, I'm sitting around doing nothing. Okay? I've been working all year. I'm looking forward to spring break. Shut up and leave me alone. No. How many times did I say no, Rachel? A lot, didn't I? A lot. This year, I agreed to go. Say amen, nothing. Y'all didn't go. But I agreed to go. Y'all stop amen at me. It was like I thought I was going to die. They worked me so hard. I'm telling you, I'm old. I told her this. I'm old. I can't do what I used to do, you know. I can't run that hammer. I can't, you know, I can't run that saw. Well, Dad, just come train up these young guys. You know, help, help us out, Dad. You can come. So they go to these inner, they went to St. Louis, Missouri. Besides the way, it's forever to St. Louis, Missouri just to drive there. Didn't offer me no airfare. Did we, did we have to pay for our hotel too, or did y'all y'all, y'all cover our hotel? They, they did. Thank God. Thank you, Jesus. But there was there was what two hundred about two hundred college students that went roughly, and about I don't know thirty or forty volunteers uh, that were suckered into it just like I was. Adult men and women, and we went into the heart of you know where they had the shootings in Ferguson you know up there in St. Louis Missouri and rough I'm talking about this is what they told me Ferguson is Beverly Hills compared to where you're going great they're shooting people in Ferguson right what are they going to do to me so we go in there into this church and I've told this story some but it was this beautiful old Catholic church built in 1919 I think or 1909 it was old nothing was square straight and we went in there remodeled and there was about 40 young people on my team and we had a couple other volunteers and our job was just to show them what to do and get them to do it listen oh, my heart was forever changed and I was so encouraged the fact that there are still college students that love Jesus this is not a Christian college this is a secular college man and those young people in that whole mission trip, listen, you never walked into a room that they weren't talking about Jesus. You never walked into a room that they weren't praying for one another. You never walked into a room that they weren't busy with their hands trying to help this church and this community. This problem going on in that community right at that time was that they were fixing holes in the roof from where gunshots are shooting holes in the roof. And so they're having to fix the roof. And we're there. And they're telling the girls, don't go outside. But that community, they would come. And they're doing community workshops at that church every day. And they're taking kids in off the street. And they're playing basketball with them. And we were there. And we were fixing up their building. But the young people that I was with were sold out, completely satisfied with where they were with Jesus. And loving him more than anybody I have seen in many, many years. And they were college students. And God did something in me. And as we served, and those young men, some of them never picked up a hammer, okay? None of them had ever had a circular saw in their hand. None of them had ever had a chop saw. And I was training these guys, just don't cut your finger off, okay? That's my goal for the week, just don't cut your finger off, okay? Please move your fingers out of the way when the saw is moving, okay? And no one lost a finger. Thank you, Jesus. But we were able to build on that church. And we got every project that we wanted to help them do. We finished every project. And every night we had church together. And the, the, the presence of God would show up. And we were so tired. I'm telling you, I was so tired. Because you work like 12-hour days. And then you had church until 10 or 11 o'clock at night. And I can't do that. I'm just telling you, I'm old. I was tired. 
but God did something in me because I was finally willing. He had to beat me over the head maybe. Listen, serving doesn't mean that you have to sell everything and move to a foreign country. Serving can mean just cleaning up the church building so that when people come through the doors, they notice how nice the house of God looks. Did you notice this morning that it looked nice? It's clean. Did you know somebody did that? You know that, right? We, did, we, don't, we don't do this, say, oh God, come through and clean our church for us. And, and the Holy Spirit comes in and just during the week, <laughs> sucks up all the trash. By the way, you are some of the trashiest people I've ever met in my life, okay? Just walk back through the auditorium after you all leave today, okay? I'm just telling you, just in all of you, any of you do it. There's going to be peppermint wrappers. Are y'all feeling conviction right now, or is it just condemnation that you get into it? If you've ever left a peppermint, it might be. It's cleaning the building so that people notice we're taking care of God's things. A serving can, can mean just taking the time to get to know somebody's name. Maybe to introduce yourself to a visitor that's here for the first time. And they're just come because they're just trying to find a place to fit in. Thank you visitors for coming today. We hope that this is your place to fit in. Maybe, maybe you might introduce yourself to... Maybe you might even invite somebody out to dinner after church on Sunday morning or Wednesday night to go to the Dairy Queen. Maybe, maybe surely God would not call you to drive a church van though, right? Surely, but you know what? Somebody's been doing it for years to pick up teenagers for Wednesday night retro youth. And... And we still could use somebody. Maybe, maybe serving God would be doing some maintenance around the building. Maybe preparing a meal for the house of Isaiah. Or maybe preparing a meal for someone who's lost a loved one. Maybe preparing a meal for someone who's going through a particularly hard time. Maybe well, serving could even mean volunteering at Grace House. You know, going and... And sitting down with these beautiful young ladies that the devil has tried to kill every last one of them. And he's worked really hard to do that. But now then they have found hope in Christ. And they found hope at Grace House and a place to, to hear from God. And a place to rededicate their life to Christ. And a place to, to come and to be baptized and to proclaim to you that I am not the same person I used to be. God has changed me and I want you to know it. You might even serve some food at the food pantry that Miss Juanita, and just wave at me, Miss Juanita. Y'all see her? She's back there putting all these slides up and trying to think where I'm going next. She, her, she's been doing this so long she can think like I can, and that's a scary thing, Miss Juanita. But she works out at the food pantry with a bunch of ladies, and all of you ladies volunteer at the food pantry. Just raise your hand. I see Linda and some others here this morning. If you volunteer out there at all, do you know how many thousands and thousands of people we feed each year? Not counting what we've done for the 20 years that we've been operating. Someone is feeding people in this church and in this community that would, that would do without if it would not be for those that volunteer in the food. Maybe, oh, this is, this is, maybe, maybe God might call you to serve ramrodding some teenagers on Wednesday nights. Pastor Chad, surely not. Oh, God, please. God, call me to Africa. Just don't call me to work with those teenagers, God. But guess what? Somebody's, somebody's got to work with those teenagers. Somebody's got to tell them that they love them. Boy, if you were a teenager today, you would be jacked up. You thought you had it bad. It is crazy what teenagers go through today. And we get to see them every week that come. And we get to love on them and get to encourage them. We get to correct them sometime. But we also get to love on them and show them to Jesus. Maybe what about teaching and loving on little kids? <laughs> Maybe working in the nursery. Maybe teaching the Sunday school. Maybe you just could volunteer in the, in the kids' ministry to just sit back and 
take them to the bathroom. I can't be a teacher, but I can take little kids to the bathroom. You know how many little kids need to go to the bathroom when they get in the middle of the, All of them. We have to have crews of people. Just take them to the bathroom. Could you please volunteer to take them to the bathroom? Making coffee, preparing. Man, this morning, how many of you drank a cup of coffee this morning? Raise your hand if you drank a cup of coffee. Here. How many of you uh, How many of you got a donut or donut hole here? Somebody had to prepare that for you. Somebody did it. You didn't have to. Somebody served this morning. All right, so uh, maybe, maybe, all right, so I'm stopping right here. I, how much? Oh, my God. I got I to gotta move. All right, ushers, help me out right now, quick. I need, uh, I need my ushers doing something. I've got, I got four or five ushers. Everybody in the place, just start on the back row. Some of you start at the front, start at the back. There is a, what is it called? A volunteer application. And this is the areas of ministry that we need help in. And matter of fact, we're going to take just a moment. I know I've gone a little bit longer. I've been a little crazy. I'm dressed in a tennis outfit for God in heaven's sake. What do y'all think, man, was going to happen today? If you need an ink pen, I want you to t take that. And listen, if you're a visitor today and you have another home church, uh, Pete, would you help me out? And if they need a pen, just throw that at them. No, just give it to them. Just give it to them. Don't throw it at them. Maybe you have a, a home church. Maybe you're just visiting from another church. Take this with you and go to your pastor and say, hey, I want to volunteer. I want to be a nurse. I want to work in the nursery or the hospitality ministry. Or I want to work with youth or the men's ministry or women's ministry or senior adults or Sunday school. This is what we have here to available. I want to, I want to help in the food pantry. I want to help with overcomers, which is a 12-step meeting. I want to help be an usher and greeter. I want to help with children's ministry. I want to volunteer at Grace House. I want to be a mentor at Grace House. How many mentors do we need? We need mentors. One of the hardest things we can find is lady that would just go over on a Saturday, take them to the movie every once in a while, just spend some time loving on them and showing them to Christ. Uh, maybe, maybe I, I mentioned van driver. Maybe it's a prayer garden ministry. We have a wonderful prayer garden that looks like the devil is in the middle of it right now because it's just so grown up. Uh, maybe cleaning the building. Maybe you can do it. Maybe working in the office, computer graphics, sound, audio, video, information booth, outreach ministry, visitation, building construction, ground maintenance. Those are just some of the areas, but those are all areas that this church needs help with. And if this is your church, we need you to be like Jesus. We need you this morning to, to serve. If you need a pen, just raise your hand. Uh, uh, and I want you to take a moment here just to, to work on that. If you're our guest today, hey, and you decide that, hey, this wants to be your home church, start now. Start serving today. Start finding your place. I have no problem with that. Again, if you have a home church and you just came to see, fill this out. Give it to your pastor and say, I want to do this at my church. Because we all need to serve in some capacity. You can also write in, in there something that, that maybe God is calling you to do. Maybe, maybe God has opened up a door and you want to be a part of, of something else that is on your heart and mind. Everybody got one? I printed up for everybody in the building. If you ain't got one, the ushers have been instructed to put you in a headlock before you leave and stick it in your Bible. Everybody take one. I don't care if this is not your church. Take one. Look it over. Fill it out. Do something for the kingdom of God. Get involved, get involved, get involved, get involved. Somebody's going to be checking on you when you fill that out. Somebody's going to be asking you, and somebody's going to call you up and say, Hey, all right, thank you for volunteering in some uh, area of ministry. How many of you, anybody here know how to, to cook breakfast? Men or women? Because every lady's brunch, some of the ladies, Angie, and some of the ladies are cooking wouldn't it be nice if you could give them a little reprieve sometime? Maybe all our guys that show up at 6 o'clock in the morning on the Saturday and they cook biscuits and gravy and egg and bacon and sausage. 
Mm. I've got to finish in a hurry now. I'm getting hungry. They even show up with some donuts. Oh, my. Oh, my preacher. I don't like this kind of sermon. Well, you definitely wouldn't have liked Jesus. Because what did Jesus teach? What did Jesus teach? What did Jesus teach? Serving. Jesus taught servanthood even at the very last of his life when he knew his life was ending Jesus served his disciples and throughout Jesus' life he always put people before himself and every day he would spend time with his father alone in prayer to prepare himself for the day ahead in teaching and healing and praying, but mostly serving. Jesus spent time preparing himself to serve. Can we be like Jesus? Can we be like Jesus? Do you know why you were saved? You weren't saved just so you could get into the pearly gates. You weren't saved and you weren't baptized in water just so you could get wet and show the world. You were not saved so you could sit on a church pew and fulfill your call to yourself. You were not saved so you could uh, uh, get some fire insurance from hell. That is not why you were saved. You were saved to serve. We've been saved to serve, church. And until we get that message in our hearts and into our mind, we will not fulfill the call of God that's in our life as the born-again body of Christ who are called by His name Christians. We are saved to serve. Find your place. Is your relationship with Christ uh, uh, a saving and serving kind of faith? Or is it a deceiving and dead kind of faith? Is your relationship with Christ a saving kind of faith? We're going to pray in just a minute and we're going to close. What time is it? I can't read more. Is it five after? Is that what it is? 12.08. I'm eight minutes past my deadline. I'm sure Jesus will forgive me. You might have to work on it a little bit. But God, when you get to heaven, will not look over your medals or your degrees. God will not ask you for your diplomas when you get to heaven. God will look over your scars of service and He will say to you, Well done, my good and... What, what, what is it? What does the Bible say? Well done, my good and faithful what? Does it make sense this morning that we're called to serve? Does that... Does that does that make any sense at all that when you are standing before the throne of God and He looks over your scars of service and yes, you will get beat up while you serve the kingdom. They crucified Christ. There have been those that have died for our faith. The reason we're here today is because someone served and someone sacrificed so this place could be built. Someone prayed and someone cried and someone wept bitter tears for this community. And someone got beat up in the process. And God will look over your scars of service and say, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Would you stand to your feet this morning? We're going to say a simple prayer to, to 
together. And in just a moment, I want us to pray this prayer together. I just want us to say, God, this day, make me a servant like your son, Jesus Christ. That's all I want us to pray. That's all I want you to do. And you may have come today in need of a, a miracle of God. I just believe when we pray this, mir this prayer that your miracle will happen. Because you're asking God the very thing that he desires the most out of you. Is your obedience in serving. And so would you just say these words with me. Just repeat them. Matter of fact. God. This day. Make me a servant. Like your son. Jesus Christ. Would you lift your hands as an act of surrender. To Jesus would you just lift your hands this morning and just worship Him and thank Him for the ability to serve the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Would you just worship Him just for a moment? Come on, guys, sing that song as we worship Jesus. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I. Stand in your love. Yes. Thank you, Lord. And you may be standing here today, Pastor. I, I, I'm just afraid to step out. I, I've, I've never done that before. I've never, I've never worked in that area. I've never surrendered myself to whatever it is you feel God dealing with you about today. Pastor, I've never done that before. I'm a little. I'm a little out of my comfort zone. Thank you, Jesus, that this sermon was just for you. Your fear does not stand a chance when you're standing in the love of Christ. Because He has called us. His love called us to serve. Would you serve this morning? Would you not leave this place today until you have committed to God to serve others in this community? Listen, I've given you multiple ways to do that today in that information sheet you got. That's multiple ways you can serve here. But there's other ways to serve if you understand. That's not the only way. But those are areas that your church needs you to help. This church that's called the Gun Barrel City that's been here for 36 uh, years maybe, 36 years, 37 years that we've been reaching. I had a man testify Wednesday night of how this church raised his daughter when he couldn't. He told us, Pastor, 15 years ago, 18, 20 years ago, when my, I was unable, I was in my addiction, unable to raise my daughter, this church raised my daughter. And now she's a successful young lady because this church stepped in. That's one of hundreds of stories. Would you serve the kingdom of God? Don't leave here today until you have committed to Christ to serve. We love you this morning. I, I'm so thankful for new life and baptism. I am not going to hit anybody but maybe Pastor Chad with my tennis racket. But we do love you. God bless you. Thank you so much for being in the house. Fill out that information sheet. Leave it with us. Take a few minutes to fill it out right now. would be great. Take a few minutes before you leave. You know, we'll commit to bringing it back, but I'm afraid that you're like me. You'll get busy and you won't. Would you just take a minute or two to fill it out? You can leave it with an usher. Leave it at the ground central counter. God bless you today. Thank you again. Thank you guests for being here today. I don't always dress like a tennis player when I preach okay I promise you I won't be dressed like this next week